I love the mental health space though. It's where I think you find the biggest evangelists, that in health systems. You find the marketers that care most about connecting patients with care. I've noticed that your comments, I've noticed that with our behavioral health clients, uh, PE backed or not, they actually do care about the mission. All right, welcome to the Boost Conversations with people promoting mental health. And we have an amazing one here today with Alex Membrio, who's the CEO and founder of Cardinal Digital Marketing. Alex, how are you doing? Do you tell everybody they're amazing? No, sometimes I say they're incredible. Uh, <laughs> sometimes there's one one person I said, this is an awful human being. Yeah, this episode's going to suck. <laughs> it can only get better from here. <laughs> This one was uh, this one was a mandatory requirement that I bring this horrible person on. Uh, That's I I paid a lot of money for what you guys are about to hear, guys. So I appreciate the eight hundred of you that tune in. I only have about five listeners on mine, so this is very nice to have you. We have an all South podcast. We got Bowling Green and Atlanta, Georgia. On here we today. go. Yes, yeah, we're covering the Southeast. This is like the SEC like, of podcasts. Uh huh. You all have I, a podcast. It's the NFC South, but wait, no, <laughs> NFC South sucks. <laughs> I'm a Falcons fan. We suck. <laughs> it's good to be with you. Likewise, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's get into it the way we always do, which is uh, the virtual hug and the shameless plug on the boost. So the virtual hug is tell us somebody or something you are grateful for today. Man, I uh, last week we had a team of about seven people fly out to California on a late flight and half of them came down with COVID canceled flights or hand, foot and mouth flying across the country and then like quarantining in a California hotel. So I'm very thankful for that team for sticking out and the client came and we're out, uh, out still wowed by the QBR. And I'm not saying that's promotion and stuff like they pulled it together. And even with half of the people being able to attend, so I'm very grateful flying across the country. They all have families like what a pain in the ass me and you both know it. So I'm very grateful that they went and did that. I put in a lot of those flights as well. That's one I didn't have to do. I was at the beach with my family having fun or wrangling a three and five year old, depending on how you look at that while they're all miserable and sick and putting this thing on so that the client and Cardinal can be successful. So that's pretty cool. I'm very yeah. grateful and they know it. And I think, promotions are coming they're about to ask for raises because of what mm -hmm. they just went through so mm -hmm. yeah that's good you're like our stock has never been higher let's go into <laughs> yeah now. let's get it now before he tanks it <laughs> before he tanks it or before they mess up they might mess up um <laughs> tell us uh tell us the shameless plug oh, it's perfect transition uh you have an amazing team uh tell us yeah. what you do and they do and um the beautiful work you're doing yeah, I don't do much, but we've got about 80 people that do a whole lot. We are specialists in multi-site healthcare marketing. So think all your big PE backed. You got behavioral, dental, orthodontic, derm, PT. Uh, we have some of the largest in the country in all those sectors and veterinary, on and on and on. As long as mama's making the decision, it's a very retail decision. Uh, we generally are very useful there. And we specialize in paid media, SEO, analytics, and we do a dabbling of website and BI and all that stuff. So think about a media halo, everything it takes to drive a patient online generally with those types of groups. It's really honed in Google and meta search and ads and things like that. So that's been our specialty. We have a niche within a niche and we always say niches get your riches and we've built a pretty good business just on that. And then uh, since we're on a behavioral podcast, um, the first client that really set us off was Life Stand that I think eight and a half years ago. We started when they were six locations, helped them scale up their media till they were 600 plus locations. And we built all their websites and SEO, blah, 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 blah. And from that, we ended up bringing on lots of other behavioral companies that wanted to be like Life Stands. And so mm -hmm. they really catapulted us in the space and very fun. We got to learn with them, from them, for them, all that kind of fun stuff. And so. That's where we're at today. We just want to keep doing more of the same thing. We're experts in it. We don't pretend to be anything else to anyone mm. else. Mm -hmm. If you had to pretend, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would be a uh, law firm SEO guy. <laughs> law firm SEO guy. Okay. I know one of those. Um, when did you start Cardinal and when did you start working with Life Stance? Too long ago and eight years. We started, what, 15 years ago? It was one day after my kid was born. Uh, I was like 24. We left the hospital and started cold calling local businesses around Atlanta, asking if they needed SEO or PPC. 
Uh-huh. And now we still do the same thing, just with big healthcare groups, I guess. So, uh, but yeah, 15 years ago, and um, yeah, yeah, it's been wild. We started with nothing. I was 24, making 200 dollars a week on welfare, and scaled it up slow, slow, slow for the first five years, and then realized we love healthcare, and fully went into that five years ago, and haven't looked back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, necessity, the mother of invention. Uh, mm. It's not a perfect comparison, but businesses can be like babies a little bit, you know, these things that you're, you're raising these things that uh, you invest a lot into. And, you know, it's not like we want our children to be profitable, but we want our children to be successful in whatever they set their mind to. And that takes a lot of investment. Does this feel like your baby in a way? Oh, they, and you know, because I had a kid on the same day, pretty much the day before they have aged at the same time. It was like a terrible two-year-old and a kind of less terrible three-year-old. And now it's an adolescent teenager one morning it's really happy to see me and then by night it's yelling at me so they've always aged together oliver and the business funny enough so yes it feels like a baby it's acted like my baby um and it's extremely personal you don't if you run a business that's semi-successful i just don't think you sleep i don't think you rest i think you're always tense and worrying about the next thing or there's better business people out there than me but yeah I think 15 years has taken 40 off my top end of my life span, I think. But you've got 80 people working with you. And how do you, was it hard to extract yourself a little bit out of the business? You said, you you know, you're tongue in cheek there. You know, there's not a lot you do. I'm sure you do a bunch, but are you, how, how have you managed to get yourself kind of out of the <sighs> day to day and into the the top layer kind of strategy. Think yeah, we we have great people that run all the necessary departments, client service, SEO, media, analytics, and creative and all that stuff. And so they're the wizards that give me the great ideas for the content you'll see on LinkedIn and throughout our website that puts us head and shoulders, I think, above any healthcare marketing agency, maybe any agency. Um, and so a lot of my time is still, still spent with clients. I make lots of client trips and visits. That's how you stay sharp. Like I actually hear what the hell they have going on. And then... I get to hear from our team about the solution and I'm always, wow. I'm like, wow, that is stuff. I don't, I just don't think other marketing agencies and probably most healthcare marketing agencies are coming up with. And so we need to do a better job of bringing that to the forefront. But my day is dealt, uh, spent, still spent a good bit of time on clients and then another 25% probably on marketing the stuff you see on LinkedIn and the website and the conferences and all that fun stuff. And half still goes to making sure departments are resourced getting the calls from the senior leaders, this person just quit or that person's not, you know, performing or what do we do with this? Or this person's awesome and I want to hire them. Can we afford them? Um, so the good, bad and ugly of all of the talent performance and client escalations and stuff is, yeah. is probably the other half of the day. What if, what if you had to boil it down though, to what Alex does best? Like what did, what do they say about uh-huh. you or what do you know about yourself? After these they, years, that hype, you, cr- you crush. You're hype hyped. on hype on LinkedIn. <laughs> you and me both, man. Right. That's all I'm good at. Uh, I can do the other things like decently well, just because we've been doing this for 15 years. And I generally great on LinkedIn. Thanks. That's that's a team of like three full timers, two part time video editors, a content shot. They it takes like six people to put one of those videos together, and I'm very proud. I do come up with the t shirt ideas, most of them. Uh, that people love, but it's the, the stuff that makes us sound smart is like six people plus our team of 80 feeding those ideas. So I think I'm best at the, uh, the marketing and like, uh, putting Cardinals brand out there because I do care about it. I do listen to clients. Like I know what the hell we do. I know mm-hmm. how to talk about it. I'm not just a figurehead that sits up here and lets everybody else do the work. I'm in there with them. Um, and I do actual client work still to this day. I will run SEO reports. I will do whatever it takes no, to, sure. to ship stuff. And I sit on the client calls and I'll report when other people can't show up. So that's the stuff I'm best at. That's what makes me happiest. Do I really love the client and colleague like escalations and stuff? No, it's the stuff you lose sleep about. It's not my superpower. I would love to get to 150 people and have leadership that takes care of 90% of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. One day. Um, yeah, you're great. You're great on LinkedIn. Uh, CEO slash t-shirt uh, strategist. Yeah, I was just wearing. I don't have. Well, yeah. that's funny. We were going to do tie-dye for, uh, we were going to do tie-dye for the mental health marketing conference. And then we we're on there and you've got your tie-dye shirts that are rad. They're amazing. So we're not going to go that way. I don't think, although lots of people can do tie-dye, but you did it well. 
Thanks. You could do, you could do a tie. You could do a tie. I, you know, I love the saying for mental, mental health is health. We should put that shit on his shirt. I don't know if you can trademark it because I heard it somewhere else. But uh, mm -hmm. I think for that, for your conference, we are going to, we're going to be adorning red jackets, red sneakers. We got the balloon that we're going to be sending up in the air. So you deserve your own props. It's definitely the best behavioral conference in the country. And I think I've been to most of them. Uh, oh, yeah, you've been it's to a bunch of them. Not just yours, all of the, the other ones that are autism or investment related, addiction, whatnot. So, um, Yours is like the most pure education for behavioral health marketers. It's not as investment driven. It's a very nice place to be. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of great conferences out there. I, I love, I appreciate hearing that. We do invest a lot of time and energy into it. And, and we run pure, meaning I think as best we can, just making it about the education and the experience for the attendee and speaker and sponsor. Not that other people don't try to do that. I just think we do a good job of staying focused on that. And I think that's mm -hmm. what we can come back and say. But if you, if you don't know, when Alex said balloon, he means hot air balloon. So there's going to be a Cardinal Digital Marketing hot air balloon that you and five or six friends can get in and ride up 80, 100 feet in the air, high enough for anybody. Uh, we did a poll on LinkedIn and 73% of people are excited about it and 27% of people are freaked out about it. So I think <laughs> I would that's be the, in right the 20, ratio. I'd be in the 27. I will not be writing on all that. I'll be at the base of it uh, greeting people as they return down. I fucking hate heights. I can't do Cheering it. Cheering people off. I, I, uh, I love the mental health space though. It's where I think you find the biggest evangelists. That in health systems, you find the marketers that care most about connecting patients with care. I've noticed that your comments, I've noticed that with our behavioral health clients, uh, PE backed or not, they actually do care about the mission as much as health system marketers. A lot of them I've come across, they actually really do care about making sure patients get connected with care. So it's a fun space. Totally like you talk to a marketer and they're like, they actually do give a shit about it. It means something that's fun. We're not selling shoes, you know, yeah. it's cool. I totally agree. I've never met so many heart driven, uh, professionals as I have in this space. Like it's yep. almost, it's uh it's almost philanthropic to a point, which can mm -hmm. be a problem, you know, uh, in some instances you give it, give it all away. Um, but marketers in this, in this space and just the people I talk to, it's just, there's some extra connection with the way I'm wired too. Like, I think, um, I think a lot about, you know, the conference experience being head, fill the head, fill the heart, you know, connect people with each other, it's not just uh, poor education into the brain till they can't take it anymore. Although we try to bring a lot of that. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Because um, they've all had a personal instance with it. Either they've been addicted mm -hmm. to something or they currently have a therapist or they've gone through some shit or their teenager was suicidal and they found them a great therapist and now the family's happy. Like it's the one people have the most, I think, connection to and is personal and can be life or death on like a teeth cleaning or a you know, facial filler or something like that. I love those verticals too. Yeah. Uh, but this one is special. <laughs> you say that one in hushed tones, just in case somebody's listening. Well, they're going to fucking that. listen. Cause you're going to promote it. And they're going to say, listen, I love all my clients equally, but I yeah. personally towards Can't all towards my behavioral clients. No, I can. I do have one. They know it. Um, but behavioral clients, it is special to me too. Cause it turned a lot of things around for me. So I love nice. it and it's fun. I can't wait to be surrounded by uh, every meeting I've had at the M at MHM has been um, enlightening because we don't just sit down and talk about CPLs and driving more patient volume. We start by talking about the mission and differentiators. And it's like, all right, cool. I can work with this. You're actually mm -hmm. a differentiated business. We're not just talking numbers. So it's cool. It's yeah. different. And it's a tight community. Uh, so you're, you're not just a sponsor. You're also speaking. You're going to bring your client to the stage. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And then you're going to do a little... Uh, hopefully HIPAA compliance uh, education on a panel, which would be amazing. So I think we just confirmed that, which is yeah, incredible because that's another hot topic with a lot of lack of clarity. Yeah, well, we got a lot of clarity because one of our clients got in a sticky situation a few years ago and all that started popping off. So we went alongside with them learning about what would make compliant. And I said, hey, listen, this is a cool opportunity for Cardinal. Let's lead the country in HIPAA compliant marketing education. And so we really tried to do that. And brought on the best vendors and lawyers and all that kind of fun stuff. And clients come to us, you know, something funny, Steve, last week, a client hit me up and said, Hey, I referred you to another portco of this PE firm, but it was two months ago and they got hit with a HIPAA violation to which our client said, but we didn't cause we had Cardinal this whole time. 
so that's really fun stuff. And we're going to be bringing our client, uh, Empower, a great ABA group out of Texas. Anna is one of the bri- most brilliant marketers in ABA you'll ever meet. Not, not only because she's a brilliant marketer, but she actually understands the ops flow. So she helps get people through verification benefits all the way to getting the kiddo. Uh, into treatment and stuff. So brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We won't just be talking about like patient acquisition through PPC and SEO, which we help them with, but we're going to talk about how do we nurture them all the way through. And I'm going to try to get her to talk a little bit about BCPA recruitment. I think they do it better than almost anybody. Hmm. Um, so it will be fun and we're happy to support. We go to where Steve is hosting this conference just with for fun with our family. It is a very very cool place. Congrats. You know what they say about a new product or thing we do? If we're not embarrassed by version one, we took too long to launch it. Mm. So mm. good for you that you had it and we were on the shit state. Who, who cares? You did it. You moved it fast. I'm embarrassed by what we did with scaling up year one. I had like a little poster behind me in this little digi studio. So that's fine. Whatever. Next year it's bigger. This year it's bigger. Talk about scaling up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about your conference. Uh, what's that? Yeah, I think it's what like two weeks after we got a busy, we go from Emmett national, I think right to Shushmit. And then we host our own conference end of October. I think it's a week before the election. So I'm going to come up with t-shirts that say something about healthcare marketing that looks like a politics thing. <laughs> Cause they're not going to be avoided. I'm afraid everybody's going to be distracted by it only one week out. Uh, mm. I don't know about the timing on how we chose it, but um, it is all performance marketing, all multi-site provider group type stuff. So our little niche, I felt like when I was looking around at conferences two years ago, there's the big health system ones like Shishman, which are ready. There's mental health marketing coming. There's Dicoma for DSOs and ADSO. You know, there's something for all of those, but there's nothing that like just hones in on performance marketing for all the multi-site provider groups, um, which is what we do for who we do. And I was like, dude, I just want to do really advanced stuff for those types nice. of marketers and all the shit that our team keeps inside and only clients know about. Like, no, let's show case studies. Let's show the actual work that we did. Closed environment. Probably can't share the PowerPoints afterwards. So please attend. Um, and so, yeah, we just wanted to be super advanced version of what we do every day for clients. And last year we had like 300 people. We gave away a lot of tickets. Don't tell anybody, sure, sure. but we had like 300 people attend, which was awesome Pretty for our nice. first year. And we do a virtual so we can democratize access to it also. Cause I'm too cheap to actually host it anything in Atlanta. Um, so it's fun. Everybody can access. We got some of the biggest leaders in healthcare marketing. Um, and some of our most brilliant people that are going to walk you through really advanced stuff that we do for clients and you can take a peek at it and implement it yourself after. So it'll be dope. October will be crazy, Steve. You're going to be tired for a month. I will be as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. All the way. Uh, but worth it. Yeah. You guys run a great show and, uh, that's a perfect niche too. I mean, again, that's Shishmet is an amazing conference. Uh, you know, a little more, a little more maybe generalist or like full, you know, high level, something for everybody, special health, especially health system marketing. Yeah. They care about brand awareness. They care about like, and they have to like the patient when they go for, you know, they're not typically Googling for their oncologist. Like they have to, they're going to be given three options. They need to choose Emory here in town because they have the proton site. Like I get it. Brand matters a lot to them with our clients, patient acquisition matters. And so that's what it's all about, baby. Gotcha. So thank you for the kudos. I can't wait to do round two, round one. Last year, we learned a lot, a lot, a lot. It will be less shitty than last year. I can assure everybody of that. Oh, man. You should see my marketing three, four years ago. It was like Argyle sock pink uh, <laughs> patterns. I was home rolling it myself, obviously. Like everybody yeah. knew this. But you know what? Like, yes, and I shipped it. And uh, I, re- you know, I regretted half the decisions I made. Didn't make them again. Uh, then the next year I regretted a quarter of the decisions I made, uh, you know, and then didn't do them again. Now it's about systems and processes and other people, you know, it's about like smart, like a graphic designer doing the design instead of me. Uh, so, yeah. and you can just, I can just see, I can look the back and go, wow, it was horrible, but I did it and you did it. You know, you're just building things and shipping it and keeping yourself to a super high standard. It's not like we're just shipping. The you know. content is what matters. The graphics, we, you know, it's just about like, well, are people going to learn a lot and meet some fucking really cool people? Yeah. That's all that yeah. Yeah. That's the keeping the main thing, the main thing. Um, uh, let's see. One last question. I always try to wrap. Uh, tell us something that you're taking in content wise yourself. It could be a, some new vinyl. It could be a podcast. It could be a book. It could just be like an amazing conversation you had with your friend. What's something mm. that's like got you inspired? Got me inspired of the inner. Oh God, this is going to sound so shameless. I learn a ton from our clients and I learn 
a ton from the people that I interview on the podcast. I've started opening it up to talk to health system marketing leaders, which is not our bag. We don't even have one health system client. But they do cool shit that our clients don't do. They like I heard uh, from my friend Bonnie. She's running a patient podcast, which I thought was really neat for like the more higher acuity, the bigger consideration purchases or procedures. Like where she actually has patients come on and they talk about the procedure, the recovery, all of the nuances. How she got payer, uh, payer to pay for. You know all of that. That's cool because when you go in for a big procedure, the doctor's like standard shit, and they give you the printout, and they're like seven days, and you'll need these drugs and sit up at. At, sit, sit up while you sleep, whatever it could be. So I thought the patient podcast was super cool that I heard. Also, some of the other uh, podcasts I've been, uh, guests I've been having on are, are actually writing TikTok campaigns uh, for their OB mm. service line. Very cool stuff that our clients could be doing. They're hosting webinars when people don't want to come in for like the live events to meet the doctor and they're getting great registration. So honestly, uh, for my own healthcare marketing knowledge. I love the interviews that I've been having. I'm actually learning a ton. It's not a shameless plug. And then for my knowledge of how to grow Cardinal, I listen to the big B2B ones like exit five and I learn all kinds of cool stuff. People are doing LinkedIn that, that we're not quite doing yet. Sometimes I hear stuff and I'm like, man, we've been doing that for years. So it confirms what we're doing is the right direction when I'm like, why hasn't a lead come through the damn email in two weeks? Um, so that I listen to a lot of B2B stuff for, our, for Cardinal. Um, and then I read the Wall Street Journal every single day. I get depressed and then I open up my inbox slightly more depressed and then I get on LinkedIn and slightly feel better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always like your Monday posts, especially. Those are like, I could just relate. I'm just coming out of some of that like weekend high into the funk of Monday. And it's like, here we go. Alex giving me a lift, but you're eating it and breathing it. You're doing you're tracking with the healthcare content stuff, healthcare marketing content stuff yourself. Which you know, funny enough on, uh, on LinkedIn, we had a client fire us last week and they said the final straw was all of my swearing, like making Mondays go from shitty to litty and talking about um, all of the swear words and the things that actually happen at Cardinal. And I, I had the team kind of get on to me. I'm like, I'm sorry I made it worse and have damaged the client reputation, but honestly, fuck it. <laughs> You know, you're going to sign 80% of the clients because you are yourself. What do you want to be? A robot on there? It's not me. So I'd rather make less money and go out. Yes. Oh, yourself. man. I'm, I'm sitting on a video right now that I so want to ship onto LinkedIn. It's the goofiest, dumbest thing. It's like a yeah. lip sync of a 1990s like hip hop song. I'm like, I don't know. I'm Eminem? Like, no, Lil Kim. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> All right. Do it. Dude, screw it. You'll like authenticity they told me is a vibe for 2024 he just said screw it be yourself it gets you fired or people think weird stuff and they're not people you want to do business with anyway. right yes got to be you yeah the t-mobile ceo i mean there's lots of examples of people just being themselves and crushing it you've got an 80 person agency you're doing great work i hear great things about cardinal so thanks, thanks for everything you do for mhm it's awesome uh thanks for being on the boost and uh see you in october man See you in October. Thanks for having me on. For sure. Talk to you soon.